on the side of caution. Yep, that's what I was just getting, just saying. Um, I want to welcome everybody to today's May Lunch and Learn. Happy Cinco de Mayo. We're going to begin in prayer today, and it's probably one of my all-time favorite prayers. Let me see if I can get that shared with you so that you can um, follow along as I'm reading it. Everybody see the prayer? Yes. Oh, Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, I want to remind everybody that this is being recorded. If you have questions, you can um, signal me on the screen by waving your hand or putting one of the little icons up or you're welcome to chat and put comments in the chat box or questions in the com or comments in the chat box and either Esmeralda and I will read those for you. Um, this is called Share and Tell and it is because we have so many people throughout the diocese who have a passion for a particular social justice issue and they, can become those go-to resources for us. So we've invited people, if they want to, to share a particular resource that they uh, love, that they, that they go to. It's, it could be a podcast. It could be a website. It could be a, a video or a book. Just whatever they go to when they want to learn something themselves or teach somebody else. And I wanted to start with Loxy because Loxy had chosen um, kind of one of those basic resources, specifically what is Catholic social teaching. And Loxy, I have both of your resources available to share. Which one would you like me to put up first? Um, probably the Catholic social teachings. Okay, I will do that. Let me get it to the right screen. These seven principles of, are actually what drew me into the Catholic Church. Um, Father Modded, of course, was um, the person that um, encouraged me to join the Catholic Church to um, go through the RCA. Um, but it was these principles of Catholic social teachings that were so strong in my personal beliefs um, that I have used them over and over and over and over again. These are, um, this is actually a link, isn't it now, uh, Amy? I, yes, the, the, the actual document. Yeah is right here. Yeah, so it's actually um, something that all of you can download and get in your parishes. We used to have to order these at, but uh, from CCHD, but um, that's no longer the case. You can now download them, um, print them, use them, um, whenever you want to. These are, uh, the old ones were basically just a line and then the same pieces but I really like this one with uh, pictures and um, anyway, I think this is, is probably, in my opinion, one of the uh, most positive things in the Catholic Church as the way that we're to live as Catholics. Um, too often, I think we don't we don't bother looking at these things that are critically important to our faith and our religion as a way to live our lives. Um, but this is it for me. 
Um, and I hope that the rest of you download this and use it also, because as I said, it's free. It comes from the US Catholic bishops. Um, so it's blessed. Um, the other thing, uh, Amy, if you put up the two feet, the two feet of social justice is something that Father Mott developed when he was at um, the CCHD national director and has used, it's, this is used all over the world now. Everything that I've been at was social justice whether it's a church activity or not, I see these two feet of social action with Father Modet used to talk about it as the very first foot is charity and people need to be able to um, be assisted for short term in whatever their needs are. But if you stay on that one foot all the time, and never move to the second foot on why um, people are in the condition that they're in, then you do an injustice to, to people because um, charity was never meant to be long-term. And on his deathbed, he made me promise him that I would do everything I could to um, not let charity overcome social justice in our diocese. I don't think that there's a danger of that, but um, it's something that I keep in my mind all the time because Father Modet was my mentor and uh, somebody that I have just a great deal of respect for. But if you look at this closely, you'll see the difference between the two feet. Um, for example, social justice, working to improve the educational system. Um, on the charity side, tutoring children, both are critically important. But if we stop at tutoring children, we're never going to um, improve the situation, totally. We have to be able to work with a strategic plan for the educational system. All of this came to mind this morning. I actually had a person running for my district for state representative that's the Republican candidate that had asked if he could meet with me and so we had a lot of conversation about the difference between charity and justice and um, the principles of Catholic social teachings in our conversations and found actually we were not far apart in um, our beliefs and so it made me believe that if we use these on a regular basis, that we could sit down regardless of party affiliation, no matter how far we seem apart and make these the, the center of our conversations, we can always find a way to come together and um, not make enemies of each other. So if anybody has any questions, otherwise I will let Amy move on because I'm sure that there's other people here that have things that they use in their parishes also that they want to share. Thank you, Loxie. I, I'm going to piggyback on you just a little bit because one of the resources that I wanted to share is actually back at that first page. Mm -hmm. These brilliant paintings came about, or actually they're, I believe they're no, I'm not so sure if they're chakra paintings, but when um, the USCCB, the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops and Catholic Relief Services worked together to come up with a video series explaining each of the principles of Catholic social teaching. So back on this page, and by the way, all of the resources that people mention, I'll be sending out the links to these and, and the names, so oh, paintings. So that you'll have them afterwards. Don't don't worry about writing everything down. But at this website, at, at the Catholic Relief Services website, they have a section for these teaching materials. You'll notice that each of the principles is listed. And as you click on the principle, then it brings up the video associated with that. 
And then below those are discussion guides and lesson plans for both adults and youth. Great resource. I've always thought uh, for Lenten soup suppers, these would be a fabulous discussion topic. And then down below those are the handouts and posters that are available that list all of the resources with the descriptions, the shorter descriptions by them. So if, if you want to refresh your understanding of the principles of Catholic social teaching, or you're wanting to share those with somebody else, these are a great place to go. They're also, everything is available also in Spanish. And I see grades one through eight available for children. I just, I think the, I love these. They're beautiful with the paintings, especially. And, and those teachings are just amazing. I mean, to model your life using those teachings is, I don't think you can go wrong. I would agree. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that share right now. And um, is there anybody else who wanted to say something or had a question about those resources for Loxy, Allison? Let's see. Okay. So um, we really, when we do events at St. John Vianney, we really push the um, charity and justice. And can I share a screen? Yeah, absolutely. So we, um, every, um, every event that we have, we have a little poster that was made. Um, and I'm not, I don't know if you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. So this is a big laminated thing. And we uh, have a subcommittee, we create four activities that meet charity and four activities that meet justice. And we, we um, put them on little cards and attach them on hooks and the parishioners then can, the idea is just take one of these and do it. So um, my committee, we think of four for each topic and we've had four events. Now we had to do our racial equity thing online. So for example, these are the four charity actions we had. Um, for racial justice, racial equity. And, um, you know, if we had had that live, we would have had on these on little cards for people to take. And after our events, we always have a um, resource table at mass. So people that didn't come to the event can take one of these cards. And then the four steps for justice, I know that's kind of small. If they were on a card, I would have had to like, um, abbreviated these because they wouldn't fit on one of the cards, which are just, you know, maybe this big or something. But we, you know, we're really trying to push besides educating on these topics, now what? Do something about it. And some people, you know, at first they're more comfortable with the, the charity stuff. And that is, that is good, you know, but I'm um, trying to keep for people to understand that the justice is, um, you know, more long-term. And the diocese website has a great handout on the two feet and explains, and I, I always have this handout at my um, presentations, it explains why we need both. And I think that is really good. You know, it says if you only do charity, you're not addressing the systemic problems, but if you only do justice, you're really not having, you're not in touch with the people you're really right. trying to help. So, um, you know, I think that's an excellent handout but we, we've been really focusing on the charity and justice thing at St. John Vianney. So I'm glad you brought it up because Father Modic created that, the concept, right? Yes, yeah. And it's everywhere. I mean, that yeah. is just so like crazy right here in our own diocese. So, so I will stop sharing. That's all I wanted to say. I love that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Moxie. Yeah. I, I also really like that, Allison, and especially because sometimes it's so much simpler to understand when you have things side by side, yeah. which is part of the power of, of Monsignor Modit's, the idea of the two feet so that you're, lo mm -hmm. you're yeah. looking at both of your feet, but the idea that you have those options for people side by side, I think that's really a very good. Yeah, and you know, giving them something concrete they can do 
you know, otherwise you're like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we've actually had letters printed <clears throat> out, like the bread for the world letter when we did hunger and all they had to do was sign it. And I said, I'll send it for you guys. So, you know, we're trying to make it super easy. <laughs> but, and thinking of the, the activities, I have a little subcommittee and we get together and it's pretty fun to think of them. And there's lots of resources online to help you think of them, which is fun looking at all the good stuff too. Very cool. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, Jean Simpson is here, in case you hadn't seen her. She's over off to the side a little bit. We're sharing computers today. And she was going to share some resources uh, on a topic that she's very, very passionate about. So Jean, I'll let you introduce yourself. And, okay. And uh, uh, Jean Simpson, I am uh, part of the Social Action uh, Charity uh, Christian Service Group at the Our Lady of Victory. And um, one of the things that we've gotten very involved with is um, Little Adoubt a Sea. Uh, and so the resources mostly that I'm going to share today are the ones that inspire and uh, are resources for information and all the things that are going on. So, for example, it's how I got connected to a group called Encounters. So I'm a state captain for legislatively contacting our legislators and that's done under the Catholic climate covenant. And then uh, we are also um, going to be, I'm getting trained to be an animator and we'll at the end of the month, we'll be doing a capstone project um, as a part of my learning activities. So uh, that's what it's done for me personally. Uh, we are, uh, had a less is blessed uh, at our parish where we handed out checklists of just small things that people could do uh, to, uh, be, to help the environment. And it was everything from turn the water off in between brushing your teeth to starting a garden. Or, you know, it could be as simple or as complicated as you wanted to make it. Um, but that's basically what we're doing right now. And the nice part about it, part of my animator program and you know how in social action, it can be a little lonely sometimes at a parish, but let me tell you, I'm connected to global sources. I've talked to people, India, Japan, Europe, um, Africa, uh, just everywhere across the world. So there's 9,000 animators that have been trained. And so even though I go back and may feel like, you know, we haven't got a big voice at our parish, I always go back and get rejuvenated by people that that you know have great ideas and keep keep that spirit alive about how important this issue is and ideas of how to approach it. So uh, the three resources that uh, Amy's going to email you, which are excellent, is the actual about a C and part of our uh, training is to read the whole uh, encyclical that the Pope wrote, which is really just beautiful social justice from the first word to the last word. And then um, we'll do many other things, but Laudata C will have the over kind of everything, but then uh, Catholic Climate Covenant has been a huge resource. They're the most active as far as, they've been doing this since day one. And they have, that's where the encounter came from that I'm a part of and part of the animator training. and. And then the last is called God's Planet Us. And that is um, very much the, uh, an American site of a lot of things that are happening uh, across this country. So uh, all are, one of the things that was really humbling to me was that all these people, even though they're from, it kind of put me to, put me to shame a little, all these people from different countries, I wondered how we would communicate, but all of them spoke English, which really, you know, that sort of kind of shows you that uh, we need to, if we're going to be leaders and they're looking at us and, and taking the time to know our language, I hope we will be leaders in this, in this uh, endeavor. So anyway, but it's been exciting if, if environment is something that you're concerned about and the green, uh, you know, getting, getting their, our grandchildren the same planet that, that we inherited and maybe even a little better in the future. This, these are great resources. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but that's sort of my elevator speech. Okay. Thanks, 
Thank you, Jean. Any questions for Jean? And I'm trying to scroll back through the chat really quickly just to see if we've had any questions. Okay, Allison, I don't know if you saw the question about the, um, can you send the link of the black owned businesses slash restaurants? Okay. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I put it in the chat and I also um, sent it to Janet because I have her email address. Great. Great, great, great. And I will pull that from the chat and include it uh, in case anybody else would like to see that. And then Kent's just pointing out that uh, Jean's work is going to be part of the diocesan Laudato Si action plan. Um, the, the Vatican, Pope Francis came out with seven groupings, Kent, is that correct, Jean? Yes. Seven different groupings, educational institutions, parishes and dioceses, hospitals, hospitals at all seven different groupings and is asking parts of each of those groups to make commitments to the, the, uh, the, the environment and trying to be approach things from a more sustainable perspective and with a mind to caring for those who are most vulnerable. And our diocese is one of the dioceses that has committed to doing that. So you'll be, I'm sure you'll be hearing lots more about that. Let's see. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to Nancy Stone. Nancy had contacted me and had some resources that she wanted to share. And I know that you came on, Nancy. Okay, uh, what I have, I agree with everything Loxie said about Catholic social teaching and two feet. I mean, that's what I try to live my life through. I'm interested in racism, poverty, and prison ministry, and they all go hand in hand. The majority of people in prison are black and poor. I have a prison pen pal. In fact, I was just assigned a new one and wrote my first letter to him. He's down in North Carolina. America Media, I follow a lot. They have podcasts. There's a YouTube channel, articles. They have a subscription to their magazine. I felt Sister Helen Prejean on social media and she keeps everyone up to date on what's the latest as far as the death penalty. Someone already posted Catholic Mobilizing Network, and I follow that a lot. And I also follow Catholic, Catholic Prison Ministries. I get emails from them and they have programs. Um, I watched a video or a webinar a few weeks ago that was with that, um, well, Loxie, what's that priest up in Chicago? Father Kelly? Yes. Okay. From his program. Mm -hmm. And that was very interesting. Um, I listened to the Field Hospital po podcast, and that's with Gene Gaffigan and Mike Wells, who's head of uh, where Peter is. And they always have, always have guests on there. And I like listening to them because um, they have books. The authors, the people they have on there have written books. And so I get books for our book study at St. Anthony. <laughs> and I also follow initiative on Catholic social thought and public life on Georgetown. It's called a Global Georgetown. But those are great resources because they all cover the poor and the press human dignity, solidarity, and Catholic social teaching. Nancy, could you maybe um, put links or the names of the sites you go to to get these podcasts? I'm trying to do that right now. Okay. My computer doesn't always seem to cooperate on cutting and pasting. Or seeing you. <laughs> or seeing me. They were supposed to come today and fix it. And they got too busy, they said.
Amy, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Uh, every every host nightmare, the, the mute button. Okay. Um, thank you, Nancy, for that list. That was terrific. Glenn, you mentioned that you have a spiritual resource that you feel is very helpful. Would you like to share that one with us? Yes. Um, one of the, I shouldn't say problems, but uh, I, one of my challenges is to keep from simply becoming a gray-haired hippie. Uh, I have to have some grounding. I have to have a reason for doing what I'm doing. Otherwise, I just become a um, another political activist. So there is a document uh, I'd like to share. Can you see this one? Not yet. And you should be able to share, Glenn, but I'm not seeing it. There we go. There. Uh, this is a very small pamphlet put out by 23rd Publications, and it's 30 days with St. Ignatius. Excuse me. Every day uh, begins with a scripture, a prayer, and an action. I got this little booklet at a men's retreat sponsored by the diocese. And as you can see from the illustration there, it's about worn out. I'm going to have to get some more because I just wear it out. But I, I would recommend this for anyone who needs to be personally grounded in their faith. Terrific, thank you. Glenn, so what? Glenn, what kind of actions are they? Are they social justice actions or more personal? They are basically personal, but let me just turn to one. Um, okay. Um, I will turn, I will identify what Ignatius would call disordered attachments, things in my life that get in the way of loving God, others, and myself. I will ask God's help to find better balance. Um, each one is different, but they take their cue from the scripture, and often they require you to modify or to consider your uh, actions with respect to others. As I say, this is for my personal development. Great. Thank you. Yeah, it's, you're right, Glenn, you have to keep in mind why you do the work you do, mm -hmm. why you're trying to, to make a difference. That's a very good point. Nikki, I noticed that you have put um, some different resources in. Do, are there any, I, I will absolutely copy all of these and put them out there, but was there anything that you wanted to share about them? Um, let me see. I don't know if I can do that where I share the link to it. I could just talk about them or okay. I have them all kind of pulled up, but I don't see. Do you want me to pull them up? Um, if you wanted to, too. Okay. Or I could share screen. Here, let me see this. This will be really easy. Okay. Okay, so I'll start with the one I just posted. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so the Jesuit retreat house, just talking about like Ignatian spirituality. If anybody is just getting stressed out from like trying to make the world a better place, it's a good place to just go inward and kind of practice those Ignatian um, exercises that I think it was it Glenn who was talking about um, and just have some peace and quiet and just be in a real faith-filled environment and the beauty of nature. Um, but this is, the Just Faith Ministries. This is something that I know Leslie Kilkanon had told me about years ago as having been very impactful for her in like, I think an eight month program to just teach her about Catholic social justice. And um, it's, it's a little bit of expensive resources, but they're just really high quality Catholic programs that are like with incorporate reading and, um, you know, teachings of social justice combined with like the prayer, you know, and action and things like that. Um, and then this one with the 
Catholic mobilizing network. I just think it's really cool that they have a total focus on the death penalty issue and mobilizing Catholics to care about that pro-life issue. Um, and then recently, this one is something I think we're going to use on campus because um, this is so Catholic social justice, you know, the ones that inspired the nuns on the bus kind of movement. So it's more rooted in, instead of the bishops, the sisters and their social justice work. But um, just faith is expensive to bring to campus for Catholic social justice teaching, but network has this wonderful free PDF guide. I don't know if I can see it like right here, but I have it all printed out and we're planning on going through it next year on campus. But um, it's in here somewhere, but it's there's like a nice PDF, um, you know, just study guide about Catholic social justice teaching that incorporates prayer and things like that. And, you know, there's just a lot of resources here that we can use. So I think that's pretty much all that I thought of. I like a lot of the things that you guys have been saying, and I learned some new things. So thank you. I just Glenn, thought I'd share as well. Glenn and Nancy and I are actually in a Just Faith pilot program. Right now, it's not quite as smooth as Just Faith programs usually are because it is a pilot program. And so they're kind of going as, um, as we go along. Um, but Glenn, do you want to tell them a little bit about that program? Oh, it's a difficult uh, to, to summarize very quickly, but it is focused as all just faith elements are a balance between our faith and action. And this particular one is oriented towards the environment, the creation. Uh, if it has an overall theme, the theme is for us to recognize that we are a part of creation, not separate from it, not above it, but a part of it. And it's to help us to learn our role within that creation. The good thing about the pilot program is it was free. So <laughs> that's why we hopped right in when they asked us. The basic RC, excuse me, the basic Just Faith program, which incidentally was based on the RCIA, mm -hmm. is probably the most effective conversion, conversion in the sense of turning toward God program that the Catholic Church has available to us. It is long, it's eight month long, it consists of a series of videos. Uh, when I facilitated it, it had eight books that uh, you had to read and so forth, but our pastor was willing to uh, use church funds to provide that for the members of the group. And it was so powerful that uh, one family, husband and wife, that were a part of our experience, uh, he turned down a uh, promotion to go to another location to stay and finish the program. Very cool. I, yeah, I agree with Glenn and this program, this pilot that they're doing right now is actually a partnership with Catholic Relief Service. And so um, I, I think that's been um, very helpful too because it talks about the environment and what it does for poor people. And yeah, it's based um, on Laudato Si. Yeah, I thought it was very, very moving so far. The book that they're having us read right now is a very moving book also. If you read Laudato Si, it is basically about relationships. The relationship between man and God, between men and between man and the rest of creation. As I see that, as I say, the theme is to recognize our role within creation. I don't want to say that. Uh, Nikki, thank you so much for sharing those. Uh, yeah. And if you'll stop your share, I'll see if there's anybody else who has one that they would uh, like to put up. Those are all great. And again, um, I will get 
get the list out to everybody. Going through the chat, Kent, I thought I saw that you said you had some that you wanted to share. Is that correct? Yes, very, very quickly, if I can. Uh, it's similar to uh, Glenn's share, 30 days with St. Ignatius of Loyola. Mine is um, 4,745 days with St. Glenn of Davenport. <laughs> One of the things that you'll hear Glenn say frequently, and he may attribute it to a former pastor, is the responsibility to both read the gospel or scripture in one hand and the newspaper in the other hand. Um, a large diocese, you've got Newton News, the hometown current from Williamsburg, the widest paper in the diocese, the Tipton Conservative, and the West Branch Times. As a diocesan office, we don't have the means of reading 80 local newspapers on a daily or weekly basis, but that source of local news is important for parish groups that are trying to be mindful of all that is social action. It all happens first locally. And for something to be of value to a parish, they need to know what's happening in their community to know how to respond and to go and proclaim as we're called to do at the end of mass. The other resource that I would remind us of is um, the parish directory. In this picture, we have a, a former legislator who uh, a few years ago helped uh, an anti-trafficking group write a piece of legislation that in turn helped um, those that had been trafficked as minors to not to be charged with a criminal uh, act. On, on the next page, there is a, a longtime parishioner who oversaw a feeding program on the weekend at the homeless shelter using rice bowl money. So just as we have to be aware of what's available in the greater community, some of our strongest, richest uh, resources happen to be our fellow parishioners. And my challenge is take the time to get to know what people do uh, for a living, uh, vocational interests, what they're incredibly passionate about, and merely draw them into the efforts that your parish commission may undertake. Very my respect and admiration for some of my former pastors is very great, but it was actually uh, Bishop Dingman that said uh, that the way to uh, the look at the world was with the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. <laughs> great, uh, great thoughts there, Kent, and definitely mirrors what we're trying to say with this particular Lunch and Learn. We've, we've brought in people from all over the diocese to speak about different things that they are doing, but the, the commonality between them all is that they live in the small towns and the cities, and they are people who work in the diocese. They have jobs. They go to they go to church. They have neighbors. They just have been present enough to identify a need and to work to meet that need, whether it's on the charity level or on the justice level. And we have we have some awesome awesome resources out there. Um, one in particular, uh, I was very sad losing her as a, as a friend, but also losing her as a resource was Nora Dvorak, yeah. who did so much and worked with that legislator to write that law, um, put her whole heart and soul into it for, the, for human trafficking. And that was just of such, she felt very, very, very passionately about that and, and put the time and effort in. Um, and, and her heart, put her heart into it. So we have lots and lots of people like that throughout the entire diocese. Dara almost single-handedly pushed the legislation through for the, um, what is it, the, with the children that- Yeah, anyhow, she almost single-handedly did that on, um, I 
think it's almost like what 30 babies have been saved. She took her pro-life um, beliefs and turned them into action, which was absolutely what we're talking about with the two feet of social justice is um, taking those Catholic social teachings and doing both feet with them. Other resources that people would like to share? And if you don't, off the top of your head, have like the web address or the link to it or anything, don't worry, we will figure it out and get it out to people. Emily, you had something? Hi there. So um, I feel like I'm not even in the same realm as all of you that is oh. that are sharing all of these amazing resources. Um, so like, I feel silly saying these things, but I'm going to share. Um, so I just wanted to say like, um, that I think that social media can be a good or a bad thing, but, um, I try to be the good in my life every day. And so I try to be the good on, on the social media every day. And, um, I think there's of course that dichotomy of, um, you know, don't stand on the street corners and let everybody know, you know, there's that dichotomy of like, the look at me versus um, bringing awareness. And so I always have that like in the back of my mind when, I, when I'm trying to share these things. But like at the end of the day, I think, well, if I'm just making one more person aware of this, like it doesn't really matter if people think that I'm saying, look at me, because really what I'm saying is like, I want you to be aware of this resource. Um, and it just, um, I, I feel like I've tried to do that in my life just as a person and share those things. And, um, so I do have a lot of people that have come to me and said like, Hey, I need to do X, Y, Z, or, Hey, where can I go for this? And I think, you know, everybody has, um, only a limited amount of brain space. And so as you're putting these things out there to people, you know, they're not sucking all of that stuff up because it's maybe not relevant to them. But then when the time is right and they need that resource, they really need to know, like, who can I, who can I reach out to because I need help or I need to point somebody in this direction. Um, and so I just think, like, if you can continue to share those resources and just be a point person for people, then they will know that when they have a need or when they know somebody that has a need, that they can point them to you and that you, if you don't have the resource, that you probably have this awesome network of people, which is all of you on my screen right now. Um, I, prior to this uh, job, I worked um my first job was working at Children's Therapy Center of the Quad Cities in their development. And then I went to work at Our Lady of Victory and I worked in their parish office. And so being in a parish ministry, you know, um, we would have people come in off the streets and say, you know, I need help with rent or I need help with, um, you know, this or that various, various needs. And so we were able to, uh, with the help of uh, churches united at that time to help with various needs but but sometimes those those needs had to fit in this special box right here and um, you know not everybody's needs fit in that little box and so that's why I think it's really good to be able to share amongst each other um, just some of these um, resources so obviously this is a diocesan wide thing so the resources that I have here are most likely in the quad cities not the national ones that all of you are sharing but I still think that there is uh, value in sharing those kinds of things because in in our community we have a lot of resources and so maybe that resource might be helpful for a smaller community and again I think it's just mostly about um, raising awareness like so I just love to share some of my favorite charities. Like um, one of one of my favorites is called the Mini Fridge, and it's somewhat new. I think it opened uh, during during COVID shutdown, maybe or around that time. I I don't know. It's kind of fuzzy, but it's down um, on the west end of Davenport, and it's a community fridge, and anybody can stock it, and anybody can take from it. And I believe it's still open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And um, the cool thing about that is it's not necessarily like a food pantry where you're going and getting just your, you know, things that are shelf stable. This is an actual refrigerator. So you can put milk in there. You can put meat in there. You can put fresh vegetables in there. And so that is like a cool resource. And um, 
you know, I'm sure they have that in many cities around the world, but I just, it's one of my like favorite new charities. And um, so not everybody knows about that. Um, another one that I remember that we uh, sometimes pointed people to, um, I pulled it up here. It's called a Freedom Pharmacy. And it is a nonprofit pharmacy that's located in the Maine at Locust Pharmacy. And um, the Iowa State Legislature allowed for the implementation, I'm reading this off their website, the implementation of the Iowa Prescription Drug Donation Repository in 2005. So basically what happens is if you have, if there's a person in um, like a long-term, long-term care pharmacy, if there are prescriptions that are unused or um, they can donate those medications to this pharmacy so that qualified patients who reside in Iowa, who fall below the 200% of the federal poverty level and who are underinsured or uninsured can have access to these medications. So um, those are just, I just wanted to share, those are two resources that I have. Um, but I, again, I just think that it's one of those things that um, just be the good and share those things and read about those things. And, you know, like I said, if people aren't ready to take in that knowledge, they may click that you have that knowledge when they need it. So um, just be those people and be inspired by each other. That's all. Thank you, Emily. Very good advice. And, and don't feel like a newbie. You're out there doing stuff. So, <laughs> um, Ginger, I hope I'm not being too familiar by calling you Ginger but you had something you wanted to share? Oh, you're muted, sorry. There we go. Um, thank you, I, I'm enjoying hearing everybody's uh, resources, um, especially the local ones, because uh, in a minute I'll tell you why that's uh, especially interesting to me. Uh, Kent and I have been in discussion about this. Um, how many of you are familiar with the Called and Gifted program, the St. Catherine? of Siena, spiritual gifting. Okay, um, went to that this last fall and there are a couple of ministries that are springboarding out of uh, that particular class. Uh, one gal that is at uh, Allison St. John Vianney, you're familiar with the um, St. Francis pet ministry that they've started there for, they're gonna be doing um, support for people who've lost pets, like a support group to help a grief group for people who've lost pets and they share resources about pet care and do campaigns to raise, uh, uh, to collect donations for the uh, local pet shelters. So that's one of the ministries that's, that's come out of this last class. I'm starting another one, which is a single parent support group. Uh, we're calling it Connect Support for Single Moms. And um, we are still, we're in the research phase at this point. Uh, going to be starting up a 501c3. We're not there yet, but we're surveying single moms in the community, trying to figure out the best time, the best location, and just to gather their interest because we anticipate that there's going to be, you know, the question from funders of uh, how do we know people want this? So um, the best, I've created a flyer that I've put on my phone and it has a QR code that links to a three minute survey that asks those questions. And um, I've been, you know, as I meet people and asking them to point their phone to mine and take the three minute survey. The, the idea is this, I was a single mom for 12 years and it was truly the hardest time. I don't know how many of you know or have been single moms, but it is so challenging and there is never enough time and it can be extremely isolating. Um, there's, there are resources in the community to, to, for people to access that provide a lot of needs, but this is really about addressing the need for emotional support and peer support. Um, there appears to be from the survey responses, we've had tremendous interest in this. Uh, we're trying to, we need to offer vetted childcare background, um, checked childcare for this. Um, we want to feed them both the moms and the kids. So they, they don't have to worry about a meal that evening. Uh, we want to send them home with a freezer meal to lighten the load on a busy night. Uh, and we want to offer them connections to local resources, but 
the thing that they're telling us is the thing that they're most interested in is, is the connection because the isolation can be terrible. As we found out in COVID, isolation can kill. And so, um, so what I'm asking you is if this is something that you are interested in helping to spread the word in your parish about, I would love to come and talk to, um, to anyone at your, at your parish about this. Um, nobody sees flyers anymore. So yeah, you really need to communicate this way in order to really um, give, people, give people the sense of what it is you're trying to do. We're really hoping to partner with some uh, parishes to help with some of the food prep that we're gonna need to do because we, we won't have them for more than 90 minutes. We'll do assembly, but we won't have time to cook those ingredients. So I'd love to connect and have parishes take turn in doing some of that food prep so that we can do the assembly at these meetings. But anyway, um, connect support for single moms. You're gonna be hearing more about it, but I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to tell you about it. And uh, I can post, I'm not good at multitasking here, but I'll post the link to the survey um, and I will, um, I'll send out the narrative on it too. That gives you a little bit more of the background. And I hope that if you haven't already spoken to the women at, uh, St. Anthony's, they are yes. doing, okay. Yes. So. We have been in conversation with John and, and the women at St. Anthony's who are uh, doing a lot of mentoring with single moms that have come through the, um, uh, McAnthony window. So yeah, good, good tip. Great, thank you, Ginger. Appreciate you sharing that. And I'll make sure to get that information out in the follow-up email as well. Uh, I want to introduce our last person who I reached out to to see if they wanted to provide some resources. His name is Mitchell Hora, and he is a farmer from Washington, Iowa. And I'm gonna just turn it over to him and let him speak. So. Yeah, um, sorry, I've missed most of the, uh, the chat here, but... Um, yeah, we farmed down in Washington and um, grew up going to St. James down there in Washington, but um, my wife and I go down to um, St. Joseph's now in um, East Pleasant Plain. I live down there around the Brighton area here now, but um, I also own a soil consulting company, a regenerative ag um, sustainability consulting company, helping farmers to implement better farming practices, more sustainable practices. So um, some resources that we we have there, um, I co-host a podcast that's produced by American Public Media. It's called Fieldwork, fieldworktalk.org. Um, it's now in the fourth season with um, really great sustainable ag content, um, talking to farmers and policymakers and all kinds of different stuff. Um, I have my own podcast as well called the Top Soil Podcast. We have lots of resources on our social media pages um, and on our website at continuum.ag just tons of different um, tons of different resources that we're continuing to put out there just to help farmers and help landowners and help those that are directly impacting agricultural ground, make sure that they understand, hey, we can do things in a way that's more sustainable, that lowers our carbon footprint, that, um, that improves water quality, just, and it puts more money back in the farmer's pocket. But implementing some of these practices can be really tricky it's very new. There's a, uh, we're dealing with a biological system. So there's a lot of question marks around it. And of course, weather always throws things out of whack on the farm as well. But, um, but if farmers are getting the right resources, the right help, they can really be successful at implementing regenerative ag systems. And that's what we do um, is helping that and try to put out as much content as we can. Um, Kent was uh, messaging on our field day. We've got a shout out to that too. We have a big field day that we'll be hosting down here in Washington on June 6th. Um, so um, looking at probably having about 400 people at our field day down there. So that'd be awesome. And just continuing to put out as much, as much resource as we can for anyone that's impacting ag land. Um, trying to make sure that we all do our part to, drive the resiliency of our family farms and the profitability of, of rural communities, but also do it in a more sustainable manner. Cool. Well, and I know that you have a, a prior commitment in about two minutes, but I yeah. wanted to tell you that I had read about you in the Catholic Messenger, Barb Arlen Fai, yep. two and a half, three years ago, did a, yeah, a article like about that. your work. And then I, I loved the article, but 
sorry, didn't think about you again, but I was looking for new podcasts and I Googled interesting podcasts and field work came up. That's hilarious. And I would just like to, to tell everybody, I've been listening to it. Uh, I have an interest in uh, care for creation as many of us do. And I want to say that it's a, it's a very approachable podcast. I know nothing about farming and yet I get so much out of it. So I would encourage you, even if you're not a farmer, if you have an interest in, in care for creation and regenerative types of farming and living, check it out. Uh, and I will have to try topsoil too. So yeah, topsoil is not quite as fancy as what the field work podcast is. I don't have a whole crew of professional uh, radio producers behind me on that one, but um, but just so many of these conversations and a lot of resources out there to to point farmers to or point landowners to whoever it may be. But like you said, also to just educate ourselves about where our food comes from and the work that farmers are doing to to, to continue to feed the world, but do it in a in a manner that is better for the planet. Very great. Uh, well, I appreciate you popping on today, yeah. Mitchell. And uh, it was great to hear from you. And uh, Think about doing a lunch and learn just on regenerative farming down the road. So that sounds fine. Hit me All up right, anytime. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone. Well, we are about at our end. I just wanted to, uh, first of all, thank everyone. It was so great to get people putting resources into the, um, the chat box and we'll get those out. We'll have a follow-up email. Sometimes it's out within a day. Sometimes it's not out until next, the week after. So you just have to kind of depends on how my schedule goes but you will be getting those as well as a link to the recording so that if you want to go back and listen to somebody speak about one of the resources again, you can. Um, and I think that's about it. Unless anybody has a last word to get in in the last one minute. Okay. Oh, and thank you, Esmeralda. Thank you, Tony, for the technical support. Greatly appreciated. And thank you all for being here and hope to see you again at the next one.